Thank you for having me here. My name is Ali Raza, and I'm the CEO and founder of Throughput. Uh, my, my background is in oil field logistics. Last year, I was running Pakistan Yemen operations to the Saudi invasion, where I started looking at data sets to see how we could impact the earnings per share of the company. So what we do at Throughput is supply chain actionability. Uh, this is a new era. Uh, the big challenge we solve today is uh, you have a lot of data sets, you have analytics. When you go to the tech guys, they think it's cool, but when you go to the CFOs and private equity owners, you try to figure out what, what do you actually do with it, and how do you impact the free cash flow and working capital. So that's what we do. So what I want to walk you today is to show you how you can use your existing shipping data, sales and purchase order data, capacity data, data that you already have in systems like Dynamics, Project 44, Microsoft BI, you name it, and uh, show you how you can impact the working capital. For one of our customers, that's an end-to-end -end, uh, supply chain. They do everything from manufacturing logistics all the way to retail. So what you're seeing on the screen is our homepage, which actually shows you what your current net profit is and the tweaks you can make on the demand side if you can actually meet it better and how you can optimize inventory to get more profitability. So what you're seeing on the screen is you can do about another one and a half million dollars in profit margin from sales just by better demand matching and another $22 million of working capital. So the question is how do you get there, right? What, do you, what changes do you make as a VP of logistics, VP of supply chain? So we have the ability to actually go in and map that end-to-end -end supply chain. So think of your suppliers, your plants, your warehouses, and customers all on a single dashboard. Now if you're a VP of logistics, you don't really care about the stuff that's getting there on time and full 90% of the time. It's the stuff that doesn't make it there on time in full, right? And you have to make the calls in terms of what should I be speeding up and what should I be cutting out, right? And we can do this down to the product level. So say if you were managing 3M supply chain and you want to look at like how are they doing, uh, we have the ability to help you free up capacity this way, right? Now the question is, what do we actually sell? Well, that all comes down to demand. We have a unique ability to actually optimize customers and products by demand and value to get you to use your capacity better, right? So naturally you want to be selling stuff that makes more value, more demand, and get rid of some of the stuff that is a little bit more cyclical and hard to forecast. What we get customers to think about is contribution margins. In fact, who cares if you do 300 million in sales and only make 2 million in margin? We get you to look at opportunities to go after things where you know, availability is only 66%, so if you were to air freight that, you could be making more in margin or more in sales. Uh, what we also do is we look at demand not only from an aggregate perspective, but a global perspective, right? Uh, it's one thing to say that there's demand uh, at a global level of X, right? But if you're in Arkansas, you might have a demand that's high consumption value and doesn't have great forecasting. But if you're in California, where we're based, you can actually see that it's low consumption, but the forecasts are really reliable. And so we have the ability not to only demand forecasts, but also capacity constraint to demand. If you think of Operation Warp Speed, when we're thinking about getting 20 million vaccines and we could only get 3 million, well, if you don't capacitate uh, constrict the demand from an on time flow and on shelf availability perspective, uh, you're not going to deliver, right? And furthermore, we can get into the nitty gritty in terms of event analysis. So if you wanted to get into the day of week to see what the relative impact is in uh, delivering these products for holidays, we have the ability to do that, right? So, uh, so that's the demand piece, which brings us back now to the inventory piece. Well, how do you get the $22 million, right? Now, Many customers, and there's some people in Walmart in the audience, are worried about losing Walmart as customer, right? So what they end up doing is they end up stockpiling a lot of inventory. What we show the customer is you got to trust them on your, your suppliers on lead times, right? If your customer can get you something within a day or two, or your supplier can get you something within a day or two, and you have $8 million of inventory, cancel the next few orders, you're going to free up cash, right? There's no reason to have this much inventory stocked because you're worried about service levels if you're actually measuring the actual demand and the actual lead times into the uh, supply chain, right? You can see you can still hit 100% on time in full without having 300% the inventory. So that's what we do, right? We look into the demand inventory. We can even get into the bottlenecks. We get people to think beyond predictive maintenance and like reverse logistics and defect detection. Those are very localized use cases of AI that add no more than 2 to 11% of impact, but you're guaranteed not to push about you know, 81% of this, this, the, the supply through this bottleneck, right? And so speaking of who we sell to, right, we sell to the CFOs and private equity groups. At the end of the day, we basically say that, look, at the end of the day, you have a business to run, you have p to run, right? You don't care if McKinsey solves this problem or the software does it for you, right? But we need to know what your strategy is, right? So you need to tell us what you want to do. Do you want to grow the company like an Amazon, right? If that's the case, we will show you how to meet your infinite demand, right, by running some of your machines and trucks and stuff to death and giving you the schedule to do it down to the customer and product level, right? But if that's not your strategy and you want to be more profitable and generate free cash flow like an Apple, then we can tell you that if you put the right product in the right distribution center or factory at the right time, 
and come up with a new schedule that's looking at bottlenecks, then you can actually free up a lot of stuff in the warehousing uh, space, which is you know, millions of units down to 100,000 units, and ultimately free up all this cash flow to re-inject back into your business, right? So uh, that's us. Today, I showed you about 5% of our capabilities. It takes no more than a week to set up. If you're interested in seeing what we do with ports, with cross-selling and upselling uh, potential, please come by our booth or just email me at elliotthroughput.ai, and I'll give you back your two minutes. And thank you for your time.